Hey. Hey. Are you upset about something? I'm fine, really. If this is about, it's just, we're on a crazy budget. We're both teachers and my parents. I know, it's fine. But if you want to bring a plus one, I promise that I'll find a way. There's not going to be a plus one. There's no one to bring. I I'm fine. I spend all my weekends at bachelorette parties and weddings and now baby showers, so there wasn't exactly time to find a plus one, even if I wanted to. Go back to your party, Laura, okay? Go. <laughs> I want you there. I want you with me. I, I love you. I adore you, but I actually think I need to leave. But... I need to go home. I've, it's enough. I've had enough. Enjoy your party, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Fuck you. Excuse you. This is my bachelorette party, Jordan, for my wedding. Me! Me! This isn't any of our other... It's me! You have been completely unenthused. I'm sorry. Allow me to try to enthuse a little more. It just feels like you're sleepwalking through all of these events, and it's like, you're my best friend. I really count on Do you. Do not. What? Laura, just don't go there. Don't go where? Just trust me. Just don't go there. Don't go where? Don't call me your best friend, okay? Just don't call me that. Why? We haven't been best friends for a while now when we're almost 30, so I kind of can't believe we're actually having a conversation about best friendship, but it's so totally unfair for you to still call me that when that's so clearly not the case. How can you say that? Who's the first person you go to when you need someone? He's my fiance. We're getting married. Things change when you have- We were best friends when we lived together or when we spent every single weekend together or when we talked on the phone multiple times every single day. But we don't do that anymore, not even close. You wake up next to Tony, you go to sleep next to Tony, and when your mom pisses you off, you call Tony. But I haven't found someone to replace you, and all, all, replace you. all the things you got from our relationship, you get from Tony now, which is great. But all the things that I got, things that I really need, yeah, I'm not getting them from anyone, but you still tell me I'm your best friend, but it's so different, it's so, so different. And I feel so alone, Laura. Why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you just- And say what? Don't be in love? Don't marry someone? I don't say any more time like we used to. That I haven't been as giving or- <sighs> Look, things are crazy with this wedding right now, but, but I promise once we're done, I promise that we can find a way And you go on your honeymoon or what? In, in two years when you have kids with him? I'm not having kids in two years. Okay, three years, five years, when you have children. It won't be possible for you to- You can't be the same kind of friend. You'll have a husband and, and children, and uh, I won't even come close, and I shouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to. It's just, your wedding is my funeral. Can you understand that? <sighs> I'm happy for you, and I, I feel like such a fucking selfish fuck, because all I ever wanted was your happiness. I, I just never thought I wouldn't be part of that happiness somehow. You are a part of that, a huge part. I feel so excluded. Why? Why aren't I a bridesmaid? What? If I'm so important to you, why am I not standing up there next to you? My sisters are my bridesmaids. And your cousin? Well, because she doesn't have any sisters and I wanted to do something nice If I'm so important to you, why am I not standing up there next to you? You're doing a reading. The most important people in your life are standing up there next to you and I know for a fact that I'm more important to you than your cousin and I'm not up there. <sighs> We're keeping the bridal party small. This whole, this is not the wedding I thought you would have. So now you're gonna sit in judgment of my wedding. If I was a woman, I'd be a bridesmaid. That's a fact. You can say what you want, but you're being so gendery right now. And you're like the least gendery person I've ever known. But now you're getting married and there's this whole new side to your personality that I never, ever, I, I feel like I don't even know you. Because I'm having a wedding. Kind of, yeah. I mean, why are you even having this wedding anyway? Because that's what people do! When did you become someone who does things because that's what people do? I'm having a wedding because I'm gonna bring my world together with his for a night. A weekend, not a stand night, a weekend. For, stand the stand third for, of three stand, weekends. Stand in front of people that we care about and have them see that we're in us. And then celebrate that with a big party. Yeah, okay. That's why. Right. And believe it or not, everyone else I know seems to get that. You're the only one that doesn't seem to get it. <laughs> I'm the only one. Yeah, the only one, Jordan, and... Sorry, but I kind of 
can't believe you're making me justify this to you on what should be the happiest time of my life. The one person who I thought was my greatest ally, my biggest cheerleader, my partner. He's going to be the one that's acting like this. He's going to come to my bridal shower and sit there glowering at me, which I pretend not to notice, but of course I fucking noticed. And now he's going to come to my bachelorette party and throw himself a pity party. In, a in pity the middle party? Of what? He's not a bridesmaid? Are you serious? <sighs> I try to be a compassionate person. I really do. But you really test the limits. I test the limits? You fucking test the fucking limits, Laura. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You test the uh -huh. fucking limits. Uh-huh. Yeah, you want to expand on that? You want to fucking expand on that? With pleasure. With motherfucking pleasure. Let's start with tonight. Exhibit A, the bachelorette party, which comes on the heels of the bridal shower, where we all had to buy you pots and pans and Cuisinarts and all this shit for a kitchen that you'll never use because you don't cook. And this is, of course, after the engagement party, the one in New York, that is, that's not including the one that we had in Massachusetts, which I also went to. Two engagement parties to honor your engagement, a bridal shower to celebrate your status as a bride, and now tonight, a bachelorette party to celebrate your bachelorette status. And don't think it wasn't obvious to everyone when we showed up at your apartment tonight that the reason you were all sweaty is because they had just fucked you. So you get fucked by your fucking amazing fiance and we have to spend more money to buy you drinks and dinner and fucking more drinks. I guess that budget you're supposedly on doesn't apply to your friends. So Jessica flew in from Chicago and Marcelli flew in from San Francisco and Amy flew up from Washington and fucking Iris, Iris flew in from London. People are spending thousands of dollars to throw you this bachelorette party whose purpose I couldn't articulate even if I wanted to. And now the weekend you have for your wedding, an entire weekend, Laura, where we all had to somehow get to North Carolina, which means flying and renting cars and booking hotel rooms for three fucking nights because your rehearsal dinner's on Friday and your wedding's not till Sunday. So I'm basically spending like $2,500, which I don't really have right now on something that I don't even believe in. And you don't either. You don't either, which is exactly why you're having this totally untraditional newfangled ceremony with poetry readings and musical numbers because you recognize the stupidity of adhering to traditions that no longer make sense. And yet you're still adhering to them like this religion of cliche with your white dress and your lady bridesmaids and their fucking matchy matchy dresses and your cake and your everything. And how you have the audacity to like radically rethink some parts and then play fucking docile little wifey in others is so fucking weird. Like legally changing your name, which I guess is totally in keeping with the fact that this party is also a funeral for the lore we all used to know because now she's an entirely new person. So let's honor you for making one fucking decision that has no bearing on me whatsoever, except that it somehow enshrines the officially non-existent role I'll play in your life from now on, except as occasional court gesture and, and pitiful reminder of what happens to people who never find someone and spend their lives all alone attending the life events of all their friends and then going home and getting into bed all alone, staring at the ceiling, trying to understand how everything went to shit. <sighs> I don't want you to come to my wedding, Jordan. Great. Because I didn't want to go to it because the whole thing's retarded because- I hate that word. Th you have never hated I've always that hated that word. You've never always. hated that word. That's actually not true, but whatever. <sighs> so when we were talking about having an alternative family- What alternative? Irma? There that was just talking. We're human beings. Talking is how we communicate all of our like fundamental needs. If that's just talking, then what about the last 10 years has it been just talking? <laughs> just, just find someone else to do the reading. Don't worry. You can save your money and just- Don't be an idiot. Of course I'm coming to your wedding. But you clearly don't want to be there. And so I'm telling you, you don't have to. That I wouldn't, that's not even an option. But I'm giving you the option. You can be there and support me the same way that I'll be there and support you when you get married or you cannot come. Don't say when you get married. It's an if, not a when, an if, because there are actually a, a lot of really good people who never find someone and I could be one of those people. So then what? Then what happens to me? Well, presumably you haven't been a fucking asshole to all of your friends. And so you have friends. Friends with husbands and mortgages and a million other priorities who I go to visit once every three months when they could squeeze me in. <laughs> Uncle Jordy, 
It's not going to be a very happy life for me. Well, I don't think that's how it turns out for you. <laughs> but, but if it does. But if it does, I think that you can recognize that there are people in this world that you love. People that you want to be happy. And when they find happiness, which might be the hardest fucking thing in the world to find, you celebrate that with them. And you can recognize when moments are about you and when moments are not about you. And when the wedding's over. <laughs> then you go home and you go to bed. What do you want me to say? Going to my party now.